Now we're going to look at telling the difference between whether a noun is singular or plural. This is a fairly important thing to know because it works when you're trying to match subjects and verbs where if you have a singular subject, you're going to have to have a singular verb. Uh, this also, by the way, these same rules apply for pronouns. When you're trying to make pronouns match the words they refer to, you need to be able to tell whether the noun you're dealing with is singular or plural. So to start out, it starts out fairly simple. If you have only one item, that's pretty obviously going to be singular. And so therefore, you're going to be using singular verbs and singular pronouns. So for example, I can say the horse is in the barn. So since horse is singular, I'm using the singular form of the verb is. Now, it continues to be fairly simple if we have more than one. That's pretty obviously going to be plural. Uh, so if we have something where we have more than one, I can have the cows are in the pasture. So we have the plural cows. Therefore, we use the plural uh, verb are. So the cows are in the pasture. Now, we're getting to get a little bit more complex when we look at compounds. If you have a compound that uses and, and means adding things together. So even if you're adding things together that is singular, when you're using and, you're automatically going to end up with something plural because when you're adding things together, you automatically get more than one. So I can have the horse and the mule are in the barn. So horse and mule are both singular, but we're adding them together with and, so we use the plural of the verb. So we use are. Now, it gets a little bit more complicated. If you have a compound, and you use either or or nor, that one can be tricky because if you're saying it's either one thing or a bunch of multiple things or vice versa, you can't really tell. And so what you do when you have this kind of situation where you've got or or nor, you match what's closest. So whatever's closest to the uh, noun is what you're going to match. So for example, I can say uh, neither the cows nor the horse is hungry. So we have cows is plural, horse is singular, horse is what's closest to the verb, Therefore, we use the plural form of the verb, I mean the singular form of the verb is, because what's closest is singular. Uh, on the other hand, if I had it the other way around, neither the horse nor the cows are hungry. So in this case, the noun that's closest to the verb is plural, it's cows. So we use the plural form of the verb are. Now, there are some others that get a little bit counterintuitive. For example, if you have um, what are called indefinite pronouns, that's anybody, everybody, someone, nobody, all of those, um, All of 
of those verbs, or I mean nouns, pronouns, all of those are treated as singular. And this becomes a little bit counterintuitive because one of the things you think, well, everybody, isn't everybody a whole bunch of people? Shouldn't that be uh, plural? Uh, and the answer is, take this thing apart. And if you take it apart, you have every body. So body is singular. So even though you're talking about lots of people, you're considering those people one at a time. And one way you can test this is, does it make sense when you use the singular versus the plural pronoun? Uh, we say everybody is at the party. We don't say everybody are at the party. It sounds very weird to say everybody are at the party. And that's your clue that tells you that since we say everybody is, is is the singular, pro, singular noun because everybody is singular. So that's something to remember. Um, even if it sounds kind of, um, uh, even if you think, well, everybody's plural, it's not. It's singular and you can test it. You don't say everybody are. You say everybody is. Uh, some other things that are a little bit counterintuitive. Uh, one is um, when you have uh, a topic of study or discussion. This one's also going to be singular. And it seems a little bit weird, um, but uh, when you're talking about, for example, I might say politics, is a strange science. Even though it looks like politics ought to be plural, we actually treat it as singular. It's a topic of study. So we say politics is a strange science. Um, another one that seems a little bit counterintuitive is if you have a group. Uh, what is usually known as a collective noun, where you're talking about a team, or a family, or a class, or a herd. When you have a group like that, that's also treated as singular. And once again, this seems a little bit counterintuitive uh, because you think, well, isn't it a bunch of people doing things? Uh, and once again, the answer is it counts as singular because we count the group as everything in the group, every member of the group is acting together as a unit. So for example, I may have uh, the team is enjoying a winning season. We don't say the team are enjoying, we say the team is enjoying. And the reason is that the team is a single unit acting together. Uh, all of the members of the team are working together as a single entity. So we use that a group is going to be an it and not a they. Now there is one extremely rare exception to that. It's very, very rare, and that would be except when the members of the group are acting differently. When you have the members of a group acting separately from each other, that's the one exception of using the plural for a group. And this one, I had to come up with a really convoluted sentence even just to demonstrate this particular rule. And so I'm going to start way over here where I have more room. Um, the team are running around 
all over the field as if they all have different playbooks. So this team uses this plural, are running, over the field. We're also using the plural uh, pronoun, they, and once again, uh, the plural verb here. Now, as I said, this is weird and convoluted. It sounds very awkward to say the team are. And in fact, one of the things I would argue, when you have this kind of a situation, these guys aren't really being a team anyway because they're not working together as a singular unit. So I would actually fix this by stopping using the word team. Instead, I would use players uh, to emphasize we don't have a single unit anymore. We have separate people, each going his or her own separate way. And so that's the one exception. So. As I said before, whether you're looking to match a verb to a subject in a sentence, or whether you're looking to match a pronoun to the word the pronoun refers to, remember these rules. Uh, those will help you to pick which one you need to 